Our next speaker, Frederick Harper, whatever he does, it's always about sharing his passion for technology and helping developers being successful. He's a former Mozilla evangelist and an author. Uh, his book, Success in Programming, is published under APRESS, and it, it's designed uh, to help programmers succeed in the workplace with some really, really practical tips. Uh, he's a seasoned international public speaker. He absolutely loves t-shirts. He's got the best t-shirt collection I've ever seen. And he's a crazy cat man. So let's give it up to Fred. He'll be speaking about open source software. Yeah, I think my uh, branding about cats is starting to catch up right now. You know, I think internet was done for uh, sharing pictures and videos about cat. So uh, thanks for being here. My name is Frederick Harper, uh, Francophone from Montreal. So if you have any question in French, please uh, do so. So you're going to be uh, stuck with my lovely accent for the next 30 plus minutes. So uh, I'm a chief awesome officer at uh, No Lion is Born King. Uh, I just decided to do some contracts for a couple of weeks right now uh, during the time that I'm deciding what I'm going to do next. So it's kind of like uh, a new thing. I'm kind of announcing this morning that I'm uh, open for contracts. So uh, if you're on Twitter, you want to tweet, uh, you want to share stuff during the presentation, please do, do, please do so uh, by using at FHarper, my Twitter handle. No lion is born king .com. I'm going to put the slides and the recording of my presentation on my blog. The link is at the end, it's out of comfort zone.net, uh, my personal blog. So, uh, people that know me, you know that I'm a kind of like a grumpy type of person, always annoyed about a lot of things, always complaining. I think uh, I'm a developer. Uh, I used to be a technical evangelist at Microsoft, at Mozilla. You know, technical evangelists, they want to do cool stuff, but they're always annoyed and complaining about a lot of things. Hey, Rami, it's true. JR, like we're always complaining. And uh, I'm really happy to be here because Make Well Not War was uh, one of the programs that I was uh, managing when I was at Microsoft. And I really liked it because it's really about being more open. It's not perfect, but it's going in the right direction. So uh, today, I want to tell you why I don't like open source and why you shouldn't like it either. <laughs> why are you laughing? It's an important topic. So I want to share that thing with you. And right now, my clicker is not yet. So true fact. I don't like open source. I'm like that grumpy old man on the internet that is like, hey, open source, not really useful. I don't know why we're doing this. So how many people, at least in the room, consider themselves as developer doing some open source or using open source or participating in, in different open source project? How many people? Like three, four? Five out of, I don't know how many people we are, 20, 20 plus. So I don't have a lot of people to convince. But maybe the people in the room that are not participating, participating in open source, and you may want to. I hope that by the end of my talk, it will stop. It will kill that idea, and it will say, no, open source is not for me. So what is open source? Is there someone who can tell me what, what does it mean? I know, Renoir, you want to raise your hand. I saw your face. Do it. You can get access to the source code. Is it the only thing? You can build it yourself. Because you have access to the source. Yeah. Brilliant, Renoir. Anyone else? You can contribute. You can contribute. I love that word. I have no issues with that word in English, contribute. Uh, but unfortunately, I was expecting someone to say uh, some false things around open source, but damn you, Renoir, uh, it's exactly it. So we put a lot of things inside those two words. But open source, at the end of the day, mean getting access to the code. You get access to the source of the application. And that's it. There is nothing else. It's really, I have access to the code of that application, of that library, of that software. 
No matter the technology you use, no matter the programming language, even if the programming language is open, even if the programming language is, is proprietary, you have access to the source. And keep this in mind when I'm going to talk about open source right now. So everything else you think that may be part of it, it's free most of the time. But open source doesn't mean free. There is something else called the free software. And this is most of the time put together. But when we think about open source, it's really about getting access to the source. So why you should not care or you should not like open source, that evil thing called open source? So first thing first, I said most of the time, it's related to free software. When we say open source, when your manager use those keywords that are like, oh, I heard about that thing called open source. We should, we should use it. We're going to save money. It's free. Yeah, it's true. Most of the time, it's free. But that means that you're not paying for my work. I put something online, and you get access to my source, and you don't pay me. I'm not getting money. I don't know for you. I have a condo to pay out my car. I like to go to the restaurant. I need money for a living. So. When you come to open source, I've, I am giving my stuff for free. Really? Doesn't make sense for you? There's some people in the room who are like, is this serious? This is kind of a poker face. So I'm losing money. I'm losing money because uh, I may not be able to sell my software. And, and worst case, I can put my application online. And one of my competitors will see how I did my code. It will see how the business idea behind my application. It will try to replicate it. It will copy me. And it will build maybe something better. It will probably sell. What I put all my, 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 my heart into it, like all the complex idea, all the complex problem that I solve, where I lost all my hairs doing those things. I'm really going to put this online and lose all that money? It's crazy. And if you do so, if you put your code online, I'm going to judge you. I'm going to go look at your GitHub profile, check your repository, look at your code, and check everything you did and say, hmm, this is not efficient. Ah, uh, you should not have done that for a loop. It's like, no, adding like, like too much issues to the application. It's, you, you put some overload. It's not really good code. I don't know for you. Did you already try to put some code online somewhere public, giving access to people to your code, putting a public repository somewhere, GitLab, GitHub? Did you do this? Yeah? You were not afraid. Like, I think I'm not a bad developer, but putting my code out there means that everybody is going to look at my code. And they're going to suggest me things to fix. They're going to try to improve my code. I'm going to get better. It's like, I don't want to do this. I want to do my own stuff in my own place, at work, at the office, at home. Worst thing, I don't know for you, but if you start to participate in those community, you're going to create new contacts online, on Twitter, like on GitHub. There's that thing like you have profile, you can like follow me, I can like your repository. We may get in touch. You may help me at some point to find a new job. I don't know. You may look for a developer. I'm like, I'm really going to make new contact? I don't like people. I don't like to talk to people. I don't like to have a great network. So in my case, it's like, no, I want to be that guy in my basement and really doing my own stuff. So why should I make new contact? It doesn't make sense. And worse, thing worse, I'm going to be part of it. Sorry, I was laughing at my old slide. So <laughs> I'm going to be part of that community. Like, I may be attached to the open source community. I may be part of a bigger movement than me. There is a lot of implication. Like, being part of something bigger than me, like, this is a lot of responsibility for someone like me. So I don't want to be part of that like open source movement. This is a lot of pressure for me. And as I told you, that means that I'm going to need to read some stuff. People will comment on my code. I'm going to be able to see Rami just published. I need to talk about Rami in every talk that I'm doing when he is he's here. So uh, Rami published something on GitHub. I can go see Rami is a good coder. And I'm going to be able to learn his process, learn how he's thinking, and like improve my skills. I don't know for you, but when I decided to go uh, in the tech industry, when I decided to be a developer, my main goal was to learn one language. 
and stay like this for the rest of my career. I don't want to have like a next step in my career. I don't want to have a better job. I don't want to have a better paycheck. I don't want to travel. All those things are like, no. I want to hate to five jobs. I want to continue to do Cobalt all my life. I think like, like being part of those projects will improve my skills. And I'm not quite sure it's something I want. And worst thing worse, I don't know how many pages you have on your resume, on your Word document that everyone has you, or on LinkedIn. But if you participate in the project, it means that you can put this in your resume. You can put this on your LinkedIn page. That's adding noise to the internet. Like all the bytes that your provider will use to transfer that text that you had in your resume, I could use this to show like some really cool cat videos. So you don't want to add those skills to your resume. It's like it's too much noise. And you can even get recognition. Like, there is so much need in the open source space that there is even company or organization that's going to recognize your contribution to the open source community. I'm thinking about Mozilla. Mozilla is a great example. They have a ton of, like, full-time employees, but they also have a lot of volunteers. And if you're participating, if you are helping the web to be more open, if you are working in the open source, they're going to recognize you as one of the Mozilla representatives. So you can go see your manager, you can go see in a new job, and you can say, hey, Mozilla think that I'm doing great stuff, and that I'm helping the web to be more open, that I'm helping those projects to be open, that I'm helping the open source movement. It's too much publicity. It's too much visibility. It, I, I don't see the point of those things. And I don't know for you, I'm kind of like a little bit narcissistic, uh, egocentric, and uh, egoist. Is it a word, English, request? Yeah. So uh, by doing this, by putting your code online, you're helping other people. The other time, like in my previous blog, I was using Jekyll, which is a HTML static site and a, uh, generator. And I was missing one plugin. It was in Ruby. So I created that plugin. And I thought, I, OK, maybe I was not. I was not that much uh, into open source, but I try. I put it on GitHub. I put it there. And there are some people using my plugin. So it's like, I'm helping other people with my code, and it's quite, it's quite annoying. And the thing is that open source is, is not the mother or father or, or, or all those other type of uh, initiative, but it still inspires a lot of other things. So we're still like annoyed with all the, that new things, that new noise on the internet, like Creative Commons. I don't know if you know that license, but uh, as an example, I tried it. I don't know if that's going to work, but my presentation is Creative Commons, which means that uh, depending on the type of license, you can use it for free. So if you want to give that presentation at some point, I don't know why you would like to do this, but if you want to do this, you can do it. And it's kind of part of that open source type of thing, sharing with people, being part of a community. So yeah, we really needed another license to make things more complicated. Did you hear about open data? Did you catch the, the joke? So if you catch the joke, usually people laugh. It's like funny. No? Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> so, so there is something called open data. And, and, and we have, uh, if, we, if you want to talk to the guys from Make One Not Word, this is what they're doing. And, and it's kind of weird, because there is like those city and government that give access to free data about different things in the city, different information for free. They give you access. Sometimes the data is not very well shared. It's not like uh, they don't follow a good process. But they still give you access to this. So open data, again, it's not a child of open source, but it's all coming in that same idea. And that means more free stuff, more things that are, may not be maintained. And there, there's a lot of issues with this. Open science. So there is scientists in places in the world that share what they find that shared their research online doesn't make sense for you. We should keep those and, and, and just sell them and, and create medicamentation that we're going to sell 900 bucks instead of seven bucks. And no, don't read the internet. No, OK. So <laughs> open education is the same thing. So you, you get the point. There is all those kind of like philosophy or way of sharing things that, that kind of came on because of open source, because of that way of thinking. And worst thing worst, I don't know for you, I only have 24 hours in a day. 
So to participate in those projects, it takes some of my time. And I prefer to do some being watching on Netflix because there are so many good TV shows. So I don't want to use my time to participate in those projects. And everybody knows any open source project, it's not secure. You know it. Like there is no security. Uh, everybody, like all those hackers, they can look at the code and, and find all the flaws and attack you and, and, and make your application just, just go berserk. It's, it's, it's crazy. And, and there is no support most of the time. Like if you use those libraries, you're going to ask questions somewhere, nobody's going to answer you, and you're going to take forever, and you really need to go into code and figure it out yourself. It's like, hey, it's not because I'm a developer that I would like to go into code and fix stuff. Like I have other things to do in my life, and it's complicated. Like Renoir was like, yeah, you can modify the code, make your own version, and blah, blah, blah. Renoir, maybe you don't have a life. But I have one. I have one. So uh, it's, it's quite complicated. Like I, I was trying to participate in one project, and you need to like fork the repository and make a local copy. And every time you do a pull request, you need to have a comment about what you changed, and someone's going to review it. And it may take forever. Yes? Yeah, because if you don't follow how, uh, the, uh, how you should do a pull request, like the best practices out there, someone is going to be, you're going to have like those GitHub troll that's going to go against you and going to say, this is not the way to do it. You're, you're like screwing everything up and it's like you're not helping and blah, blah, blah. So uh, I, I, I'm done with like internet trolls. And <laughs> even Microsoft is going open source. Is it a sign that you should not like open source? It's crazy. And, and I have the right to say this because I worked at Microsoft in the past, so I gave myself the right. So how to avoid participating in open source project? And this is probably the best part of my presentation. How you can avoid to do it? First, don't use any open source library of software. You don't know what you're going to use. You don't know those things. They're free. Uh, most of the time, they're, they're so easy to use that it's, it's not fun. So you need to do your things yourself. Reinvent the wheel. Like you have money, your customers will give you time to do this. Don't use other library. So this is the first thing. Don't report bugs. Because even if you, you may not have the skills to contribute to a project, you may say, hey, one thing I can do to help the open source communities is to report bug. Did you ever try to do this in an open source project? Hey, you go, I did it. <laughs> Leo is going to like me, but uh, I was using one of her projects, and I said, hey, there is that bug. And she said, I know. I don't have time. Fix this to yourself. Well, it, it, she was more friendly than this. But I was like, OK, no worries. I just created an issue. Like, let's not fix it. I don't have time either. So I fixed it after, uh, and she was like, OK, I'm going to add it to the project. But you know what? I had to create my account on GitHub. It's like, seriously, another account, I have to create some things before trying to push an issue, and she's telling me, like, thanks, I already know, like, you're losing my time. I love you, Leah. Uh, it's, it's, it's a joke. But uh, again, and, and, and okay, don't report uh, bugs, because it's kind of complicated. So there is a lot of open documentation out there, and that's still helping the open source community. That's still helping those projects. So there is a way for you to fix some documentation, to have some documentation. And one example that I really like, maybe it's because I work at Mozilla, I really like the Mozilla Developer Network. I like the documentation side, but oh my god. Like if I want, it's an open wiki. First, who's still using wiki in 2016? It's like it's old technology. Nobody's using wiki anymore. And you go there, and you need to. <laughs> Yeah, and you need to you need to sign up again, and I can use my GitHub account or even Facebook, and it's like it's it's like three click to create an account. I have a lot more good things to do, but I go there, and if I fix a typo or if I fix a, a part of the code in the documentation, that means that the time that I figured out that they had an issue in the documentation. Another freelancer doing the same job like me will go on the documentation and will have the good code. I don't want to do this. I want to stay ahead of my competition. I don't want, again, I don't want to help other people. So fixing documentation or adding documentation 
It's one of the things you can do, but I highly suggest you won't go there. It's, it's really, really too complicated. Don't publish stuff on GitHub or GitLab or any public repository. I told you, that's going to be terrible. I did it. Like, I don't even participate that much, which is kind of funny. <laughs> but you go there, people will judge you. Oh, you did not uh, publish that much on your GitHub profile. They're, they're even so pretentious that they're saying that GitHub is the new resume for developer. It's crazy, so now I need to have a GitHub account and again create that account and I need to fork those repo and everybody knows that like, hey, this is those, those I contributed to those repository and I don't have that much and I'm not that good in the open source, so I just prefer not to be there than having people judging me all the time. And it's super complicated because you're gonna go there and, and you're gonna try to contribute and people will say like, oh no, it's not like this, or, or you're too new, or oh, we are a crowd of like 10 people reviewing all the pull requests, and, and, and it's like there is those crowd and those click, and it's, it's super complicated. So now, you don't want to fix documentation, you don't want to participate, and you still think about, I still can help people. I think it's part of that open source mentality to, be, to work together to help people. So you're gonna go on Stack Overflow, and you're gonna say, hey, maybe there's questions I can answer. I can build that profile. Well, I can hear me on the speaker. What happened? This is the voice of God. So uh, you can build that, that profile, and you're gonna get points, and you can show this to people, and it's like a trophy, but you answer questions, and people will just copy-paste your code and not read what you wrote, and they don't understand how it's working, but they just copy and paste it, and it's working. But again, you need to create an account, you need to log in, you're gonna put those questions and people won't give you points for the answer you're gonna put and you're gonna be upset and you're gonna go like during the night, go under the shower with hot water and cry in the fifth position because that's gonna ruin your life. So don't go on those sites, don't go helping people answer those questions because you're not contributing. At the end of the day, you're just answering questions. You're not really contributing uh, in the open source community. So it doesn't make sense at all. And really, please, don't, don't participate. Like Chromium, which is like Chrome is kind of based on uh, that open source project Chromium. Look at the page, there's like six command line, uh, <laughs> six comments that I need to do in the command line to get the source and be able to participate. We're in 2016, like command line, no, I want a GUI, I want something more easy. And I have access to all that code, and you're telling me that a company like Google use an open source project like this and making money and money and money? Doesn't make sense for me. But it's true, I'm using Chrome, it's free, I'm not paying for it, but I'm not gonna help either. I prefer to have free stuff, complain, and not really participate to fix stuff that are not working for me. And it's so complicated to be in the open source space, and they need so much help that they even started something, I think it's coming from Mozilla if I'm not wrong, they started to do this on Bugzilla, but they have that like tag or, or category, and it's called good first bug. So it's good for me if I'm either starting as a developer, or it's my first contribution in open source, or uh, I don't really know how it's working, there's people that are gonna say, hey, this one is, I would say, not easy, but maybe easier than the other one. That's gonna be good for someone who wants to start to be involved, and they make it easy. I don't know for you, for me it's a sign that like it's not working, they need to find solution to get people involved. But if you look for a good first bug, you're gonna find a lot of those, but you don't want to do this. But it's there, so it's just, it's just like, it's, it's weird, it's weird. Jer, stop laughing. And, and they also have that open source initiative, which, uh, what is the name of the guy? Mayor something? Uh, Eric? Eric? Richard Stallman. No, no, Stallman was on the free stuff, which is a different story. So, you know, there is a Eric, someone who started the open source mentality, and they have that website, opensource.org, where you can get a lot of information about open source. It's like, do you really have time to read all that thing and understand what is really open source? You have other things to do. You have Facebook status to share with people. So it's, there are so many things out there. So right now, I think that I, I, I hope, I, hope I, see, I see smile on your face and people that are like super bored. And <laughs> no, you just don't smile, you really look bored. Yeah, you, yeah, you look so bored. Yeah, sorry, so sorry. That's bad, huh? 
Yeah. I, I'm nearly done. That's going to be good. So for the other people in the room, <laughs> I hope I convince you that it's not really worth it to be part of that community, to, to be part of, of that open source thing. And, and there's that image at some point that was going on the internet. And nobody ever got fired for choosing open source. Are you sure? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that someone somewhere got fired about using open source. So keep this in mind. Stay away from open source. Don't use it. Don't participate. Don't help it. Don't what? Blink. Don't what? I just don't hear you. Don't blink. Oh, yeah. I say yeah, but I don't hear. So <laughs> stay away of open source, please. And, and please uh, help me. Help me spread the hate about open source. We need to talk to more people. We need to say to more people that open source is not a good thing. David is with me on this. So that was my talk. My name is Friedrich Harper. Obviously. I didn't tell that I had to say this, but I saw some faces in, in the room. That was a big joke. I'm a huge fan of open source. This is what I was doing at Microsoft. I worked at Mozilla. But I heard so many stories, bad stories, uh, misconception about open source. And some of them are true. It's not always easy to participate in a big open source project. It doesn't mean that we should not do it. So obviously. Don't spread the hate. Contribute, participate. There's different ways to show you. I show you everything you should not do. Do it. Take it on the other side. Fix documentation. Help publish things online. Open source is more of a, it's, it's more than giving access to free stuff. It's knowing what's happening. It's being able to myself as a developer modify things. Participate in something bigger than me. Helping other people. There is non-profit organization that we're not able to build their own application and that use open source and that use free software to make it happen. And ob obviously, you're going to learn stuff. You're going to probably get better. You're going to get recognition. And everything is like it's, it's something that is worth it. So if you have any comment, question, and salt about the event, Please uh, send me an email, farper.oocz.net. This is the best way. I'm that old. I prefer email. I'm going to put the slides recording on outofcomfortzone.net. And that's it. All right. So I feel like I need to reiterate, if you didn't get that that entire talk was a joke, uh, let me just remind you, because we were getting questions online about people being very angry that <laughs> Uh, you know, add Fred for saying all these things. Um, any questions from the room? Where's your GitHub account? So uh, it's uh, Hef Harper. It's on GitHub. Uh, funny enough, uh, I did not participate that much in a lot of big open source uh, projects for the simple reason that at some point in my life mm -hmm. I decided to do other stuff than being on a computer when I'm not working because my old days right. on a computer. But uh, I'm still trying to help in different ways, either everything I said, okay. answering questions, pushing some part of the code that I do, trying to fix some bug. I'm just not involved, like, heavily involved in a big project. But you can still go FRP on GitHub. You can go annoy me in comments and say, hey, that part of the code, Fred? Yeah, I don't believe you're a real developer. So please, feel free to do so. All right. Uh, we've got some questions uh, from the live stream. So with open source, there are so many challenges with managing the flood of pull requests and the overwhelming feedback. How do you manage it? Actually, uh, from what I've seen uh, from many projects, so uh, how it's working is that they basically get a team of people who will basically review pull requests. So don't be a one-man army. Uh, if your project really take off, that's going to be like nearly impossible. But uh, if you uh, if your project take off, get a team that will ensure that the quality of the code, because it, it's not because it's open and people can participate that you're going to receive good good code. Uh, so you need some people to like review the code and. Uh, Obviously, don't feed the trolls. Uh, there is really what I call the GitHub trolls who will go with everything and not a good feature, not a good pull request, this code with shit and blah, blah, blah. So there is trolls everywhere. Uh, so don't feed the trolls and just focus on what's important, what's more important. And if you have like too many pull requests or everything and you don't 
have all the bandwidth to manage it. Uh, it's, it's sad, but that happened quite often. Uh, just go to the most important one. And the beauty with open source, and it's not always great to do so, but sometimes it makes sense, is that you can just take the source and, and fork and do your own project. I saw this with some libraries when I, I wanted to use it. I was like, hey, there is that bug that is not annoying for a lot of people, but annoying for me. And I, I sent a pull request, and it's been like a month, and nobody merged it within the code. So I just decided to do a fork and do my own modification and use my own uh, version of the code. So it's not always the best way to do it. But in my case, I was like, okay, I solved my issue. And I was able to do this because I got access to the code. All right. So, uh, so how many people ate me online now? Uh, lots of people are sending in lots of questions. Uh, I have another one for you. Um, funny talk. So at least someone uh, got it. <laughs> um, but licensing is a nightmare. Companies just steal the repo and the code and sell their libraries as their own. How do you handle that? Uh, I'm not a legal expert, so I'm just going to go with my own opinion. Uh, it's like everything else. You can write blog posts online. You can put your pictures. You can put creative comments, license, or any other type of license. If someone's really want to steal your stuff, uh, that's going to happen. So uh, there is probably ways to manage this, uh, but I, I don't know. I have no answer. The only thing is that be sure you have uh, proper licenses because you're going to see a lot of projects. As an example, GitHub is one of the most popular out there. So you're going to see a lot of projects uh, without any licenses. So be sure you're looking for those. There is also a website that GitHub created. It's uh, like open source licenses.com or something like this. And they explain to you the most popular one and help you to choose for your project. So be sure that at least you have a license. If you see those kind of things, depending on the type of license, I think you have some resources within the people managing those licenses. But again, I'm not a, an expert when it comes to licenses or uh, I don't have any expertise. I'm not a liar. I'm not a liar. Lawyer. Boat. Lawyer. <laughs> boat, I guess. boat, I guess. Awesome. Uh, we got a question from the room. I heard that m merging software is easier. It's more and more possible than ever. So let me ask you a dumb question. How do you get paid for merging free software into your free project? So how do you get paid to merging free software inside your? Free, your open source. Your, your own project. So uh, what happened with open source, because this is a question where people are like, hey, if I'm releasing my source, like I, I, I won't get paid and I won't get money. And there is different ways to do this. Uh, first. It, Free, as I said before, open source doesn't mean uh, free. So you can sell your application, but you get access to you get access to the source. Some people, there is some company will make money by uh, having that expertise because it doesn't mean that if the code is there, like if the code is there, and I don't know that technology and you know it, I, I cannot do that job. I'm going to need to pay you or, or ask you to do it for free for me, but I'm probably going to have to pay you because you're a man of businessman. So uh, you have that expertise, and it's good for for everything. You may be able to do some support and sell about your support. You may be able to do some customization. I have a friend who is doing customization about open source. So any type of project, you get the source. It's usually free. You got access to it. But specific customers got specific requests or specific feature that it would like to have. So uh, in that case, this guy is charging for customization. But it's like everything else. Like how would you get paid to write uh, blog post if, uh, if like you can just uh, take blog posts elsewhere and copy and paste? And yes, you have something funny awesome. to say. Awesome. No. We, we've got a question from the live stream. Uh, Scott says, open source results in forks, 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 and more forks. Why aren't there spoons? What? Awesome talk. This is a legit question from the live stream. <laughs> OK, uh, hi. Uh, you talked in the, uh, your presentation about first good bug. Is that a thing? or? Yeah. Uh, OK. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's really a thing. So I know I was like uh, kind of like playing that role of guy who doesn't like open source, but it's a, it's a real thing. Uh, it's not all project that use it, but it's quite known in, in the open source space. So if you really want to participate in, and start to fix some bugs, that would be maybe easier or less. Like, that would impact uh, a, a smaller part of the application. Uh, first good bug or first, uh, I think there is also first good feature or something like this. Uh, it's easier. And, and the thing that we don't think about, about the, the, the participating. It's uh, don't be afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to ask people. 
So everybody's busy, they may not answer you, but you lose nothing by doing so. So if you like a project and you would like to participate, ask, ask the people who own that project, like, how can I help? Sometimes that's gonna be like, thanks, we're kind of good. Uh, sometimes it's gonna be, hey, we need help with documentation. That may not be the sexiest thing ever for you, but it's a good way to start. And I know some people who started by writing some documentation and they started to fix some bugs after because they got more uh, knowledge and they got more exposure and they got their dream job in different company because of this. Je ne, parle, je ne parle pas français. Est-ce que vous Donc, euh, la, le, la question, euh, c'est quel est le, le taux de participation quand on parle des projets open source euh, en termes de professionnels versus étudiants, en termes aussi de qualité euh, qu'on pourrait recevoir. Est-ce que ça peut ressembler un peu à Wikipédia? Euh, Wikipédia est un peu différent parce que c'est euh, un wiki, c'est pas très compliqué à changer, c'est juste du common knowledge. Tu n'as pas besoin d'être un développeur, tu peux être un dentiste, un développeur, un designer, un, un jongleur et tu vas être capable de participer à Wikipédia. Donc, c est, c est, la grosse différence est là. Quand on parle de projet open source, il faut quand même un, un knowledge technologique. Euh, je dirais qu'il y a une bonne quantité de professionnels et de plus en plus qui participent parce que les entreprises maintenant, euh, depuis quelques années, s'avancent beaucoup plus vers l'open source, en font partie, release des choses, s'aperçoivent que oh, ça vaut peut-être la peine d'avoir un employé qui, euh, une journée par mois, une journée par semaine, va participer à un projet parce que cette librairie-là, on l'utilise. Donc, on est aussi mieux d'avoir de, des gens qui vont l'aider à la faire évoluer. Donc, je dirais que les professionnels participent euh, beaucoup plus que ce qu'on pense et la... la ce que j'ai remarqué, et je ne veux pas euh, être prétentieux avec d'autres types d'emplois, mais en technologie, généralement, c'est beaucoup plus qu'un emploi. On est extrêmement passionné par ce qu'on fait. Et moi, je vous l'ai dit, moi, j'ai décidé d'essayer de, de moins possible de toucher à l'ordinateur chez nous le soir après avoir fini de travailler. C'est une décision difficile, ce n'est pas toujours facile de le faire. Des fois, l'ordinateur m'appelle, parce que ah, j'ai le goût. Mais il euh, y a beaucoup de gens qui rentrent chez eux et continuent à coder. Ah, puis, puis c'est pas parce qu'on se sent obligé, c'est pas parce qu'on aime ça. Donc, participer à l'open source, ça fait, bon, ben OK, je suis pas vraiment en train de travailler encore gratuitement. Oui, je travaille gratuitement, mais c'est pas pour mon patron, c'est pour quelque chose de mieux, c'est pour quelque chose qui m'intéresse peut-être plus. Donc, c'est sûr qu'il va y avoir beaucoup d'un peu de, de noise, d'un peu de, 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 de pull requests qui seront pas nécessairement intéressants, mais dans, comme je disais, dans les, les projets, les, les, il y a des projets que c'est presque impossible de participer parce que c'est trop gros. Par exemple, le, le kernel Linux, c'est tellement énorme que c'est dur d'être euh, Joe Blow dans son salon Montréal qui va faire un, un pull request sur quelque chose, mais tu as des projets où ça va être plus facile de participer et tu vas avoir ces gens-là qui vont euh, reviewer un peu les pull requests que tu fais. Et là, je fais juste continuer à parler parce que Rami veut parler depuis tantôt, fait que là, j'en rajoute puis je l'empêche de dire euh, ce qu'il veut dire. Donc, comment ça va, vous autres? Ça va bien? Moi, ça va très bien. C'est une belle journée à Montréal. Euh, belle température, il neige pas trop, euh, il fait pas trop froid. Oui, ah. Rami. I really love that answer. Although I understand French, the folks on the live stream don't. So, I'm going to ask it to you again in English. Um, no habla espanol. Now I can't even, I can't even, like, I have to translate it Switch. in my accent. Switch. So, the question is, like, uh, is, is there more professional or students yeah. that are participating, in, in, participating open in open source? And what is, like, the quality of participation? So, uh, the short answer is, uh, I think, I personally think that it is more professional because when we think about technology most of the time without uh, saying anything about other type of jobs, but in our, our category of jobs, we're usually really passionate about what we do. So, when we go back home, there's a lot of people I know that still continue to code. I decided not to do so because I have other passion. But uh, it's not that other people don't have other passion, but it's like it's so much strong that they like to contribute, they like to be part of it. So there is a lot of professional doing so, but there is more and more students also participating because schools start to understand that, hey, uh, they need to learn how it's working. They need to have access to real kind of work experience. And on top of that, when you think about it, the students, and, and now I didn't say this in French, but the students, when they go out from school, they all have the same experience. They got the same courses, they basically did the same homework. So 
by trying to differentiate themselves by participating to those projects. They can exactly, as I was saying, have noise to their resume. They can have new stuff. So the quality is not always good like anything else. Uh, we're talking about is it com uh, can you compare this to Wikipedia? Not really because Wikipedia is so huge. It doesn't need you to have like technical knowledge. You just need to have knowledge about the subject, the page you want to correct or had or create. But still, uh, there is some noise. There is some developer that want to participate and, and may not be that good or not that good compared to the other uh, contributor. But most of the time, and, and not most of the time, even smaller project, uh, if you don't have the right to uh, commit code, you need to do a pull request. And someone needs to say, hey, it's good. I can merge this in the code, and it meets your quality criteria. So that prevents, in most projects, to have a code that you may not like or may not make sense or uh, may not be as good as you would like or had a feature that you wouldn't like to have in your project. We have a great question from Ian. My company doesn't let us developers contribute to open source. We have inner source. Uh, our corporate hosted version of GitHub. Uh, we, we, we share with tens of thousands of other developers in our company. How do you make a case for open, really open development? So, uh, good question. First, I would say that like anything else in life, it's never like black and white. So, <laughs> yeah, I have an issue. I need to speak to the camera. I should, I should speak to the camera woman. It's, it's more interesting than speaking to the camera. So, uh, basically, uh, <laughs> Don't laugh. So basically, uh, the idea is that, like anything else in life, uh, it's not always good. Maybe it doesn't make sense for your company to go open for different reason. Uh, but if it makes sense, you need to find uh, what is the goal of your company, what you want to achieve, why you don't go in the open, why you use your internal, uh, I, I missed the part of that question, but that kind of internal GitHub uh, repository. You just use Git with your own repository because GitHub is just like a public face repository, but Git is, how do you call this, decentralized. So you, can, you, you don't have to use GitHub. Uh, so it may make sense. Uh, at least I'm happy to see that you have like a good file versioning type of technology. But uh, what's in for me, and, and me being the company, so it makes sense. Like what's in for your company to go open? Again, it may not make sense. But maybe there are some advantages. If you release part of your library, some people will use it. They may fix bug for you. They may find issues. They may have features for you. But also, you may help other people. And, and, and like, don't get me wrong. Company, they're there to make money. So is there a business case that makes sense for them? It could be just like, hey, we published this. Look at us. We're good. We're friendly with people. And, and that could be a, a, a good reason for the company to do this. Sometimes I'm more looking about the end goal than, than how we go there. So of course you, you could say like, oh yeah, my company will do this just to get like nice exposure, we're friendly, blah, blah, blah. But think that at the end of the day, they still release something that's gonna help people. So the path through it may not be the best one, but the end result may be a lot better. But sometimes also it's, it's a good way to, to hire people. Like it's a really good way to hire people. And, and again, I was talking about Mozilla before. I hear a lot of people that were contributing to Firefox that were uh, going on Bugzilla and submitting bugs. I was like, hey, this guy is crazy. Like, he's always submitting good code. Like, we should pay him full time to do that thing. So I know people that got hired because of this. So it's a good point. Again, you had stuff to your LinkedIn page because there is a project section. Uh, there's a lot of people. I don't totally believe this because I think you still have more than just a code to show. But... Uh, there is a saying that say GitHub is the new resume for developer. And, and I kind of agree. Again, I'm not totally into it because you, you need more skills than just like a good coder. But I can still go on GitHub and show what I did. And it's super important because at the beginning of my career, and I sound so like old when I say this, but uh, I work on a lot of propri proprietary projects. So when I wanted to change job, I was like, hey, I think I'm good. Can you show us something? No. Everything was private. I need to sign you, like, you need to sign an NDA to see what I'm doing, what I did in the past. So by going more open, by releasing those kind of things, even by working on project on myself, I would may not be able to show what I did for the last five years full time, but at least show some part of my code. So let's say we sold uh, on this idea. So where a company should start if it decides to go open source? Good question. So... Uh, 
Really good question. I would say, uh, you know, don't reinvent the wheel for real. Uh, look at other type of company maybe in your field and, and see what they're doing. Try to see uh, what makes sense for you? Where do you want to release? Your, is GitHub the best place for you? Do you want to use, uh, there is TFS online, do you want to use GitLab, do you want to use, there, there is a lot of online repository, do you want to, to go to older one, uh, do you want to use Git to, 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 if you don't really already have something to manage your file, do you want to go SVN or CS or whatever, the old stuff, or uh, which type of license? which is really important because that's gonna decide how people can use the source. Do, do they need to, uh, if they do modification and redist redistribute, oh my God, uh, redistribute that code uh, online, do they need to, to give it back to the community? Uh, do they need to like absolutely put your name and the license, there's different type of licenses. Try to see uh, the good and the bad, bad story, the success story of people that went uh, open source and the other story that are less good, people that failed at, at, at going open. And don't be afraid to talk with people in the community. Don't be afraid to say, hey, uh, we're in Montreal. It's your case, you're here, so don't go talk. Like, let's find who are the people uh, mostly involved in open source in Montreal, no other the project. Like people that are involved and, and pay them a lunch or a beer or an hour or two hours of consultation and sit, them, sit down with them. And they're gonna, ha they're gonna answer your question. They're gonna talk to you, they're gonna help you. There is that. That thing about like sharing with people. IRC free so for people that are still old enough to know what IRC is, there is IRC on Freenode. There's a lot of channels. Go talk to the guys at Mozilla. Go talk to the guy at W3C. Uh, those are the people that are doing this since forever. Go talk to Renoir. Uh, I love how your name sounds in English, Renoir. It's, you sound so noble, Renoir. So uh, <laughs> go talk to Renoir, go talk to uh, people in Montreal, there's a lot of people. And, and find those places, go on mailing list. And the thing is that because it's the web, because it's internet, you may ask questions and people are like, oh, this is newbie question, oh, this is stupid, you should have read, or, oh, let me Google this for you. But uh, that's gonna happen, but there's a lot of people that are friendly uh, and that know how to do social interaction, so uh, you may find some help. And there is probably a story or article online about this, like how can we company go more open? And it, it doesn't mean that you need to go, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it doesn't mean that you need, the thing is that I don't like to talk, so I, I just do, <laughs> some run, thanks. I just do this like right now, so I'm gonna be good for the rest of, of the year. But uh, uh, the thing is that, uh, I totally forgot what I wanted to say, so it's okay. I think it was not important. So Remy, <laughs> want to talk? So let's let's leave the mic to Remy. Yes. Any Remy, more? You want any to more questions? Stage? <laughs> any more questions? Man, from I'm the sitting room? between those people and the lunch. Yeah. You, do you want me to be again the bad guy? <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Fred. Big round of applause for Fred. And I feel I need to remind uh, folks that didn't quite get it, that was a, a lot of that presentation was a joke. Fred actually loves open source, because I think I'm still getting comments on Twitter about this talk being not fitting the conference. <laughs> um, so we're gonna take a, a quick break. We'll be back in about an hour and 10 minutes, so stay tuned, and uh, we'll be back uh, talking about open data, um, we're going to have Roberto Rocha, who's a journalist at the CBC, uh, show us how he actually hacks, well, hack is perhaps the wrong word, but like how he uses open uh, data to uh, discover uh, some really interesting stories at his work. And we're also going to have an open data talk in, with Ember JS and a few other great talks. So uh, please stay tuned, and we'll be back in about an hour and 10 minutes. Thank you. <laughs> 